Greetings. I'm Professor Roy Gardner, Director of the Institute for Biodiversity Law and Policy at Stetson University College of Law, located in the Tampa Bay area of Florida in the United States. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the virtual championship round of the 24th annual Stetson International Environmental Mood Court Competition. The competition began in 1996. It started small. At that time, there were only 10 teams, nine of which came from the United States. One came from Spain, the University of Malaga. Since then, we have expanded to hold national and regional qualifying rounds all throughout the world. We then invite the top teams to Stetson for the international finals. This year, national and regional rounds were held in Africa, the Americas, Asia, and Europe. New countries this year included Iran and Mongolia. For the first time, we had Central Asian rounds hosted by Artsakh State University. This year's problem focuses on the reintroduction of a species of bear whose range may have shifted due to climate change. The problem was released in July and students submitted their memorials, their written submissions or arguments in November. After the national and regional rounds concluded, we invited 27 teams to Stetson for the international finals. As you know, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were required to shift to an online format, but we are pleased that 17 teams from 10 different jurisdictions were able to participate in the online international finals. We held preliminary rounds on Thursday and Friday, U.S. time. Some students were actually arguing at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning. We've been so incredibly impressed by the students' advocacy skills and knowledge of international environmental law, but also their enthusiasm, dedication, and resiliency. Earlier today, we held the quarterfinals and the semifinals, and we are now down to two teams for the championship round. We have an excellent final panel of judges. Dr. Will Burns is a professor of research and founding co-executive director of the Institute for Carbon Removal Law and Policy at American University in Washington, DC. He, is, uh, also, uh, he also founded the Journal of International Wildlife Law, as well as the International Wildlife Law Conference that we, we held in conjunction with this moot. He will be joined by Jacqueline Lopez, who is the Florida Director and a Senior Attorney with the Center for Biological Diversity, a U.S.-based NGO. She coordinates litigation in the Southeast United States and the Caribbean, focusing on protecting imperiled species and ecosystems. And finally, the panel will be rounded out with Dr. Ari Traubhorst. Uh, Dr. Traubhorst is an associate professor of environmental law in the Department of Public Law and Governance at Tilburg Law School in the Netherlands. And his particular focus is understanding and improving the contribution of international and European law to the conservation, restoration, and sustainable use of wildlife. I would be remiss if I failed to mention that he is also a certified wildlife tracker. It's an excellent panel. Thank you all for joining us and good luck to both teams. Okay, right. thank you very much. We are convened here today for oral arguments in the matter of questions relating to reintroduction of bears, a case brought to this court by the federal states of Arctos and the Republic of Ranvakura. The parties by special agreement have asked this court to decide the matter on the basis of the rules and principles of general international law, as well as any applicable treaties. Are the parties prepared to proceed? Yes, okay. Mr. President. Okay, the court asks the agent from Arctos, uh, Mr. Murkaji, to now address the court.
a uh, very good morning uh, just wanted to check am i audible yes okay <clears throat> Mr. President, Your Excellencies, may it please the Honorable Court, we represent Team Co 2000, and my name is Jayana Mukherjee. I am the agent appearing on behalf of the applicant, the federal states of Arctos in the present matter. I will be addressing the first issue for 14 minutes, and my co-agent, Mr. Aditya Dikshit, will be addressing the second issue for 14 minutes. With the kind permission of this court, we seek to reserve two minutes for rebuttal. Granted. Your Excellencies, on 23rd March 2013, Ranvikora reintroduced 20 grey bears in the northern part of its territory along the border shared with Arctos. However, by September 2017, these bears had crossed over into Arctos and caused several counts of harm to not only the biodiversity of Arctos, but also to the lives and economic interests of its citizens. It is in this regard, Your Excellencies, that the first issue before the court today is whether Ranvikora has violated international law with respect to its grey bear reintroduction project. We submit that it has for two reasons. First, since Ranvikora's actions have violated its treaty obligations, and second, because Ranvikora's actions have caused transboundary harm to Arctos. I will first be putting forth my submissions with respect to the treaty obligations, Your Excellencies. Pursuant to the doctrine of Pacta Sun Servanda, state parties to a convention are under a duty to carry out their treaty obligations in good faith. Accordingly, we submit that Ranvikora has acted contrary to its obligations under the Bern Convention, the CBD by introducing what is known as a non-native invasive alien species. I will first be putting forth my submissions in this regard under the Bern Convention. Your Excellencies, pursuant to Article 11.2b of the Convention, state parties are to strictly control the introduction of a non-native species. Such a species, as defined by the group of experts in the introduction of wildlife species, is one which was not able to sustain a population in an area by itself in historic times. Further, as per recommendation 84 of the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe, states must control the introduction of such species, not just within the geographical limits of their respective countries, but in a natural environment from which they were previously absent. In the present case, Your Excellencies. Yes, Judge Lopez. So in this scenario, does your entire argument hinge on whether or not this is considered an alien species? In other words, had Ranvikora not reintroduced, but rather um, the species never went extinct to begin with and it naturally migrated across the boundary, would you be forced to be making a different sort of argument or would your arguments nonetheless be successful? Your Excellency, we would agree that our arguments would indeed be very different. That the fact that these bears did go extinct in 1963 and were reintroduced in recent time does form an impact on whether or not they should be considered invasive. Your Excellency, pursuant to Recommendation 142 of the Standing Committee to the Bern Convention, a non-native species and expanding their range due to climate change should not be considered an invasive alien species. However, we Yes, Judge Chabas. Uh, Your Excellency, I, I can't hear your question, Your Excellency. I apologize. Uh, you should be able to hear me now. Uh, yes, yes. Before you elaborate further on, on that argument, could you clarify to the court what you believe is the legal relevance of a standing committee recommendation? Thank you. Indeed, Your Excellency. We would submit that it forms a subsequent agreement as to the interpretation of the treaty as per Article 313A of the Vienna Convention on the Laws of Treaties, Your Excellencies. In that regard, we would submit that as per this recommendation, 
this exception does not apply to species that have been recently reintroduced and specifically refers to species that have been extending their range without any factor of human agency in the present case considering that the bears were introduced in recent times the same status accorded to the golden jackals or that of the eurasian collared dove should not be given to the bears in the present case and they indeed should be considered an invasive alien species your excellencies your excellencies with respect to the fact that these are also a non native species the fact that they were introduced a mere 50 kilometers away from the border is very important in this regard if we look at the movement of bears in other state parties to the bern convention such as france spain romania etc we would submit that bears indeed have incredibly large range sizes and have the ability to travel incredibly long distances this fact combined with the proximity of the release sites to arctos demonstrates a clear causal link between the reintroduction of the species and the subsequent entry of the bears into arctos therefore your excellencies considering that the bears were reintroduced into areas to which they are inherently non native randvikora has acted contrary to its uh, to the its obligations under the bern convention yes judge lopez with respect to your last submission about the bears inherently being non native or not being found in that range i understand from the record that there are some scientists that have concerns that perhaps their range was never historically that far north but that that is not a resolved fact is is there something else that we should be aware of with respect to the facts of that indeed your excellency our submissions today are not with in regard to the fact that there was a doubt about whether or not the northern part of randvikora indeed formed a part of the native range of the bears it is with respect to the fact that there exists no borders whether man made or otherwise between arctos and randvikora and introducing these bears so close to the border inherently means an introduction of these bears into territories that include arctos and this fact is a violation of its obligations under the bern convention and the cbd in that regard your excellency under the cbd under article 8h states have a duty to prevent the introduction and spread of an invasive species as i have already submitted in the present case considering that these species are firstly non native to this area and secondly posed a threat to the ecosystem of the area of arctos it satisfies the definition of an invasive alien species as has been put forth by the conference of parties to the cbd in the 23rd decision of their sixth meeting and therefore should be considered an invasive alien species or excellencies um, i'll defer to my co excellency there yes yes just robust oh thank you very much um regarding the determination whether a species is an alien species or whether we are talking about a reintroduction of a native species when regarding this determination of either term uh, there whether the, when there is any uncertainty in this regard do you envisage a role for the precautionary principle and if so on what basis thank you Indeed, Your Excellency. This, in fact, brings me to my second argument today, which would be that Randvikora has caused transboundary harm to Arctos, and one of the ways in which it has done this is by not observing due diligence. Your Excellency, with respect to the precautionary principle, we would submit that under customary international law, a lack of scientific uns a lack of scientific certainty should not prevent a state from undertaking measures to protect the environment, especially when there is a risk of significant or irreversible damage. In fact, every single guideline that exists, for example, the IUCN guidelines on relocations and translocations, and also recommendations of the Bern Convention. Um, yes, President Burns. Agent, couldn't you argue that the precautionary principle would apply in the opposite way in this case, to the extent uh, that the other party argues that reintroducing this species will increase ecological integrity and viability, even in the absence of absolute proof that it might not cause some harm? Do they not have a right under the precautionary principle to have done exactly what they did? Your Excellency, with respect to that, we would submit that as per the principle of trophic cascades, it is true that the reintroduction of large apex predators do have certain ecological benefits to an area. However, we would submit that is mainly with respect to species that 
or had already existed in a particular area, such could be seen from the introduction of wolves in the Yellowstone National Park. However, in the present case, considering that there existed no apex predator of such kind within Arctos, an introduction of the bears into Arctos could, could cause an imbalance in the entirety of the ecosystem. And that is something we have to ensure that we take into consideration while dealing with the bears, Your Excellency. Uh, Judge Lopez, you had a question? Yes, thank you. So with respect to due diligence, I understand that there was an environmental impact assessment that was conducted. And so it, the, the, I imagine they convened scientists and experts on the species and thought about what would be a foreseeable consequence of reintroducing bears in this range. So whatever obligations they had with respect to any sort of due diligence, didn't they satisfy that in doing this environmental impact assessment? Your Excellency, to answer your question, I would like to refer to the fact that in paragraph 205 of the Pulp Mills judgment of this very court, states have been given immense discretion in determining the contents of their respective environmental impact assessments. However, paragraph 197 of the same judgment has clarified that due diligence should be as per certain internationally accepted standards. In the present Brilliant. case, Your in, in the present case, Your Excellency, we would submit that these standards could be seen from the IUCN guidelines on relocations and translocations, which has in fact been recommended by the Burn Standing Committee itself, wherein it has been stated that while assessing the impacts of reintroduction projects, states should in fact also consider the impacts on neighboring states. Your Excellency, especially with respect to... Re yes, yes, President Burns. Agent, at the end of the day, that means there's a balancing test, right? They're, they're, they're balancing the interests of the ecological benefits of reintroduction in their country against the potential risks to other countries. At the end of the day, are they not, uh, are they not accorded the right to decide where that balance lies? Your Excellency, in that regard, we would submit that by conserving or try, by trying to reinstitute the ecological benefits that may accrue to Ranvikoda by the reintroduction project, there does, on the other hand, also exist a chance that the entirety of the ecosystem of Arctos may be compromised, considering that it would set off. Uh, yes, Preston Burns. Is there anything in the record that indicates that? I see some relatively minor damage to agricultural interests. Uh, uh, some unfortunate deaths, but a small number and, and some other minor uh, impacts. Is there anything in the record that indicates that it should have been foreseeable or that it's credible that there would be wide scale ecological damage to your country's interests through this reintroduction? Your Excellency, here I would like to give regard to Article 2A of the Berne Convention, which has stated that states must only reintroduce of species as long as they've conducted or they've looked at the experiences of other member states. If we look at the experiences of other member states in this regard, we can see that bears have caused immense amounts of harm to, the, to not only the livestock of other states, but also to the ecology of other states. In this regard, Your Excellency, we would also like to refer to Article 2 of the Bern Convention, which in fact creates almost a binding and clear obligation that states should not and cannot use economic or recreational excuses to avoid their conservation goals under the Bern Convention, and especially the fact that this is an obligation of result and not of conduct. In this, in this regard, Your Excellency, we would like to submit that by introducing these bears, there is a chance that it might imbalance the entire ecosystem of a particular country. And it's not just about certain livestock losses. It's the fact that even the endangerment of one species, such as the Traubau sterns, can set up a chain of reactions which impact other species within Arctos. And this is something that would inherently cause damage even more than that has already occurred, Your Excellencies. Your Excellency, Hi. consider it. Your Excellency. You may, you may finish. Sorry, sorry, Your Excellency? Uh, uh, you may conclude. Your Excellency, our submission with respect to the environmental impact assessment was that since it was not as per internationally accepted standards, it is not adequate in nature. And with that, I conclude my submissions, Your Excellencies. If you have any further questions. Thank you, Agent. Thank you, Thank you Your Excellencies. It has been an honor arguing before this court.
I hope everybody can hear me. There's no lag in audio or video. Right, great. That's fine. Uh, if I may begin with my submissions. Yes. President Burns, Your Excellencies, my name is Aditya Dikshit, the co-agent appearing on behalf of the applicant. I will be addressing the second question before this court. However, before beginning with my submissions in this respect, Allow me to present you with a little context in this, uh, in which this issue arises. Your Excellency, as a brief perusal of the record, will show you from February 27, 2018 onwards, the bears crossing over into Arctos has precipitated the destruction of flora and fauna, threatened public safety, and imperiled an already endangered Chaubur's terns. Resultantly and unfortunately, Your Excellency, Arctos has had to have resort to lethal methods in order to mitigate such harm. Consequently, the second question before this court, Your Excellencies, is whether Octos's response is a violation of international law. We submit, Your Excellencies, that Octos has not violated international law on three grounds. The first, that there has been no violation of its treaty obligations. The second, that the duty to prevent transboundary harm has not been violated. And the third, that in any event, Octos's actions can be precluded by the doctrine of necessity. Your Excellency is beginning with my first submission regarding Arctos's treaty obligations. I will first be addressing the Convention on Migratory Species or the CMS. It has been contended by the respondent in their written submissions that the culling of the bears by Arctos violates Article 3 of the CMS. However, Your Excellency, it is our submission that an obligation of protection would only ensue when, these, when Arctos is a rain state to these bears. However, if I may cite from uh, the report of the 10th Conscience of Parties to the CMS on page number five, Your Excellencies, it has been recognized that for rain state status to a state party to be classified as a rain state, state parties in question must issue declarations to the same effect under Article 6 of the CMS. However, Your Excellencies, if you would refer to paragraph 23 of the record, it is clearly stated that Octos has denied its status as a rain state to the Grey Bears. In any event, Your Excellencies, which, as, as yes, President Agent, Burns. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the implications of that from a policy perspective. Let, let's play this out. Let's say that we have reason to believe that uh, bears have uh, have ranged into Arctos as a consequence of, of climate change. Is it your position that if you withhold a declaration that that species is now a range state, despite from a biological perspective it is, you have no obligations under the CMS in terms of protection? Your Excellencies, to address your question, I would like to draw your attention to the report of the CMS Secretariat on rain state classification from 2009, where on page number eight, it has been clarified that this discretion is awarded to states since without an established pattern of migration, any classification of a state as a rain state would violate the CMS provisions. Your Excellency, in the case of bears, as has been seen across the world, the, uh, the establishment of the, of the range of a bears, bear or their normal migratory route takes at least a decade or a decade and a half, Your Excellencies. In the present case, there are only five years that have elapsed since the reintroduction began. Therefore, to say, yes, Mr. Pre President Burns, but Agent, there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty in terms of uh, migratory patterns of species related to climate change and the fact that uh, that in, in recent years, that migration has actually accelerated. Is it possible that these guidelines are no longer really uh, applicable and as a consequence, this court should find invoking the precautionary principle that we should accord protection of species that may be threatened by climate change. Your Excellencies, even if we consider today that these bears indeed formed a part of Arctos's range, that the Arctos formed a part of these bears' range, this brings me to my second submission, why under Article 3, a culling of the bears is permitted. Your Excellencies, the exception provided for under Article 3.5D of the CMS provides that in case of an extraordinary circumstance, states can cull uh, protected species. Your Excellency, an extraordinary circumstance exists in the present case in the form of threats to human life, cattle, and subspecies due to the gray bears. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Judge Traubost. 
uh, on the topic of this phrase extraordinary circumstances would you consider uh, in light of the rules on treaty interpretation as codified in the Vienna Convention and given the objective of the Convention on Migratory Species that the conditions for exemptions to apply should be interpreted broadly or narrowly? Your Excellencies, with respect to, uh, since under the CMS itself, there is no definition of extraordinary circumstances, state, state parties are accorded a great deal of discretion in determining the meaning. However, Your Excellency, Arctos in this case has had recourse to previous state practice in uh, Croatia and Belgium, where similar circumstances were considered an extraordinary circumstance within the Aegis of the CMS, as along with Article 9 of the Berne Convention. Moreover, Your Excellency, the second requirement under Article 35D is that uh, there must be a lack of reasonable alternatives. In the present case, Your Excellency, by reason of the bears being an invasive alien species within Arctos' territory, um, uh, requires Arctos to eradicate these bears. Since it has been recognized across the three treaties that we are parties to, including uh, the CMS, the Berne Convention, and the CBD, that as soon as prevention of entry of an invasive alien species into a territory fails, eradication is the only available. Yes, President Burns. But uh, your other agent, I think, conceded that there's a possibility that in this case, the uh, the species has, has, has entered your country as a consequence of climate change, which means it wouldn't fall under the rubric of alien species, and, and thus that argument would not apply. Your Excellency, indeed not. We would not concede to that fact that the bears are not, uh, might uh, not be an invasive alien species for two reasons. Firstly, Your Excellency, if we were to concede to that point, we would, our actions would be deemed wrongful and Arctos only undertook these actions since the bears were an invasive alien species. Furthermore, Your Excellency, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, exception uh, that, that, invas uh, that species that are expanding their range due to climate change may not be considered invasive, does not apply to species that have been recently intru re, uh, introduced into an area uh, by human agency, Your Excellency. Your ex therefore, in the present case, this exception would not apply to the gray bears. Your Excellency, coming, yes, Judge Lopez. What doctrine or treaty should guide this court's analysis in weighing the conservation needs of the bear, which has already gone extinct in part of its range and has been reintroduced, um, and the tern. Uh, apologies, Your Excellency, I could you, I lost you there for a second. A and the tern. Issue. What part did you, did you share with you the whole thing? What doctrine or treaty should this court use in weighing the conservation needs of the bear and the tern? One of your arguments yep. is that out of necessity to do to damage of the ecosystem impacting the turn, how, what doctrine do we use to weigh those two things? Your Excellency, uh, we would submit that it's, a, it's not just damage to the turns, but a cumulative set of damage that has uh, occurred in Arctos. Uh, but uh, with specific to the turns, looking at it through the lens of the CBD, for example. Your Excellency, we would submit that under the doctrine of harmonious construction, uh, under in international law, all of the uh, the obligation to uh, the uh, positive obligations and negative obligations must be kept at par. Uh, in our, uh, nevertheless, Your Excellency, with respect to my argument regarding reasonable alternatives, in the present case, since the bears have already entered Arctos and have started establishing a population, as evidenced by the presence of cubs, Your Excellency, within Arctos' territory, we submit that the only uh, alternative left to Arctos was their eradication. Subsequently, Your Excellency. Subsequently, Your Excellency. Yes, Judge Lopez. And can you point us into uh, to the facts of why eradication was the only viable option? Why trapping and relocation, or some other measures shy of uh, the culling, was not practical? Indeed, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, by virtue, by reason of the bears being an invasive alien species, and as has been the experience of many states, including Austria, uh, Australia and Britain in dealing with invasive alien species, it has been recognized that short, uh, as soon as prevention uh, uh, fails, that is prevention of a species into a territory, Your Excellency, as soon as this prevention fails, 
eradication is the only alternative that is left to a state? It, yes, Judge Lopez. In any of those instances, was the alleged alien species also simultaneously a species that was protected and recognized as endangered or imperiled somewhere else or nearby? Uh, no, Your Excellency. However, we would submit that this is uh, due to the effects of climate change. This is a novel situation. However, Your Excellency, in the case in in cases uh, of um, fra in, uh, in uh, apologies, Your Excellency, in Iceland, Spain, and UK, Your Excellency, along with Sweden and France. Uh, and Romania and Ukraine permits have been issued that permitted the culling of the brown bears, which are also a listed species within Appendix 2 and Appendix 1 of the Berne Convention and the CMS, respectively. Your Excellency, with respect to whether or not in the present case the culling is to the species is disadvantaged, we submit that there is an undeniable increase in the uh, amount of bears within Ranbikora. Furthermore, Your Excellencies, our culling program is only limited to those bears that come into contact with our citizens and only within our territory, not to those. Yes, uh, Judge Schraubert. Yes, on that count, I um, wonder, would you care to provide the court with your substantiated Please. position regarding the legal status of those gray bears which use a home range that lies on both sides of the border between Arctos and Ranvakora? Are they subject to the exclusive jurisdiction of the state where they happen to be at any given moment? Or are they a shared resource under international law or anything else? Your Excellency, while migratory species in general are considered a shared resource, However, states, the rights of states to eradicate an invasive alien species has been recognized within the CBD and various recommendations of the Berne Convention. Your Excellency, with respect, if I have answered your question, I would like to move on to the disadvantage argument, Your Excellency. Much obliged, Judge Trubbers. Your Excellency, with respect to whether or not the culling in the present case is to the species' disadvantage, we submit that in, uh, in, uh, in addition to the undeniable increase, our culling is only limited to those bears within our territory and not those found within Paddington, Aloysius, or even Ranvikora. Therefore, Your Excellencies, we can validly invoke an exception under Article 35D. Since under the Berne Convention, Article 9 also provides for similar um, uh, exceptions, Your Excellency, subject to similar criteria, we submit that since there is, since we have satisfied those criteria within Article 35D of the CMS, a valid invo invocation under Article 9 of the Bern also exists. Your Excellency, uh, yes, Judge Schraubert. Do I understand your point correctly that you consider the con conditions applying under Article 35 of the CMS and Article 9 of the Bern Convention as essentially similar? Indeed, Your Excellency, the thresholds uh, in uh, both the uh, conventions are similar. However, the only difference is that there is an additional um, prohibition on the use of poisoned carcasses under Article 8, which is also subject to the exception under it. Article 9. Your Excellency, since I am uh, since I am running out of uh, since I have a paucity of time, I would like to move on to my final submission with respect to the doctrine of necessity. Your Excellency, it has been recognized under customary international law that the doctrine of necessity precludes the actions or uh, precludes the wrongfulness of the actions of this of a state in the present case case since arctos did not have any other measures that it could take along with the fact that uh, the protection of the of its public and of its uh, uh, environment are considered essential interest as in the gapchikovo case and the draft articles of state response yes yeah, judge burns <laughs> The necessity of defense uh, also requires that there's uh, imminent threats and 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 very large and imposing threats that justify its invocation. Given the fact that the damage to date was relatively minor, would it have would it have not made more sense to negotiate further uh, with the other party in this case to try to reduce uh, out migration rather than taking the actions you did or invoking necessity? Mr. President, since I'm out of time, I would just like to, I would uh, just address your question if that is fine. Yes. You're excellent. Mr. President, it has been recognized, while we, you are indeed correct in uh, observing that there is uh, a grave and imminent peril that needs to exist. Your Excellency, uh, Mr. B President Burns and Your Excellencies, it is our submission that this grave and imminent per peril existed in the form of irreversible damage that could have been caused by the invasive alien bears to Arctos. 
Your Excellency, since uh, what is essential as an essential interest of Arctos and what is essential must be determined on a relative scale, we submit that Arctos is uh, uh, Arctos is essential interest in protecting its citizens and its environment from the invasive alien bears should be given precedence over Ranvikora's interests in protecting uh, in uh, reintroducing the grey bears. With that, Your Excellencies, I conclude my submissions. It has been an honor arguing before this court. If there are no, no further questions, I would just uh, conclude with my prayer, if that is all right with the judges. Thank you, Ajit. Much obliged. Uh, Your Excellencies, we would like you to uh, find a judge and declare that uh, Ranvikora's reintroduction project violated international law and that the applicant's response did not violate international law, all of which is respectfully submitted. I thank the court for its indulgence and may it please the honorable court. Are the agents for uh, Ran Vikora uh, prepared to proceed? Yes, Your Excellency, but I seem to get a message saying all the webcam slots are used. I think that should be okay now. Can I be seen? Yes, we okay. can see you and hear you. Your Excellencies, before I begin, I would like to state my internet is a bit sta unstable at the moment. So if at any point you lose me, please do let me know where you lost me when I got back. And I apologize for any inconvenience that this may cause. Okay, we'll, we'll do that, Agent, and we'll uh, I'd, I'd ask the uh, the timers to uh, to acknowledge that and to and to freeze the time if we experience that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President and Your Excellencies, a very good afternoon. If it may please this court, my name is Pranav Valyatan Pillay, and also on the panel is my co-agent Shilpa Prasad. We are team 2099, appearing on behalf of the Republic of Ranvikora in this present case concerning the reintroduction of the Grey Bear. I will address this court for a period of 15 minutes, Your Excellencies, on the first question on whether Ranvikora violated international law with regard to its re Grey, Grey Bear reintroduction project. My co-agent will also address this court for a period of 15 minutes on whether Arctos violated customary and conventional international law by intentionally shooting and poisoning the grey bears on the reintroduction project. Your Excellencies, the case before this court unambiguously pertains to the rather indiscriminate killing of an internationally recognized endangered species by Arctos. It will further be demonstrated to this court that the actions of Ranvikora were not in contravention of any international obligations and that such actions were directed towards the biodiversity at large. If your excellencies do not have any preliminary questions, the agency seeks permission to move on to our substantive submissions. Please proceed. Thank you, your excellencies. Thank you, Mr. President. We begin, your excellencies, by arguing that the reintroduction project that was undertaken by Ranvikora was crucial towards maintaining an ecological balance in the region and was a significant positive measure that was taken towards enhancing biodiversity. Apex predators such as the grey bear are considered a keystone species, Your Excellency, and are known to play essential roles in structuring ecosystems. The continued and prolonged absence of an apex predator poses a risk of irreversible damage through trophic cascading, as my opposing counsel pointed out, often lead, yes, Your Excellency, and I'll defer to uh, uh, to uh, Judge Lopez. Thank you, President. Yes, Judge Lopez. So my question has to do with what steps Ren Vakora had taken with respect to rehabilitating the ecosystems that had rendered the habitat um, unlivable and, and driven the species to extinction to begin with, and what role that failure played in Ren Vakora choosing to to place the reintroduced species so far north as to cause this sort of harm? Yes, Your Excellency. While the grey bear did go extinct in 1963 due to overhunting and habitat destruction, one of the first steps that Ranvikora is taking towards restoring this environment is by introducing the grey bear, Your Excellencies. And towards this, they conducted a comprehensive environmental impact assessment to assess exactly where it would be most viable for the grey bear to be reintroduced. Finding your excellencies that due to poleward shifts due to climate change, that the northern half of Ranvikora was most uh, mo most fit the specification to the grey bear, your excellency. In this, yes, your excellency. Well, didn't that assessment also 
say something about how the habitat where it used to be further south was no longer habitable, right? And under the CBD Article 8, subsection F, uh, doesn't Rivacora have an obligation to rehabilitate, to, to repair the ecosystem so that reintroduction could occur there, regardless of climate change driving the species northward? Yes, Your Excellency. Article 8F that Your Excellency refers to promotes in situ conservation measures, which is also endorsed by Article 11 to A of the Bern Convention, as well as Article 2 of the Convention on Migratory Species, Your Excellency, which gives an impetus for states to take steps towards conserving endangered migratory species. Now, Your Excellencies, we state that in this regard, while the southern half might, have, might not have been viable, the environmental impact assessment found that the specific sites of reintroduction were viable. Now, Your Excellencies, certain biologists have questioned under paragraph 13 of the record whether the point of reintroduction in this northern half of Ranakola was ever a part of the historic range of the Grey Bear. And in this regard, Your Excellencies, we cite section 2 of the IUCN guidelines on reintroductions and other conservation translocations of 2013 that state where direct evidence is inadequate to confirm previous occupancy, the existence of suitable habitat within proximity to this proven range may be taken as adequate evidence of previous occupation. So to come back to your question, Your Excellencies, we state that while the southern half of Ranikora might not have been viable due to a variety of reasons, we state that the northern half of Ranikora, where this reintroduction project did take place, was also a part of the native range Ten of the minutes. species, Your Excellency. Thank you. After four years, Your Excellency, the gray bear was reintroduced in 2013. The gray bears were observed to have unexpectedly begun crossing the border into Arctos, a behavior that is known to be, yes, Judge Roberts. Yes, regarding that issue of crossing borders, I would like you to um, also clarify what the position uh, is of Ranvakora regarding the legal status of bears uh, that use two sides of a border. Uh, are they subject to the exclusive jurisdiction of the state where it happens to be at any given time or is there another arrangement under international law in your view? Thank you, Your Excellencies. We state that the bear is a shared resource and not the property of Ranvikora per se, Your Excellencies. And we state that since this is an endangered migratory species, merely shifting its range due to climate change, Arctos is thus a rain state. Now, Your Excellencies, we state that the term rain state and range was discussed in Resolution 10.19 of 2017, Your Excellencies, by the CMS. And they found that when the CMS was drafted in 1979, these terms were not defined with climate change in mind. And this resolution went on to request states to interpret these terms in a manner which is beneficial to species responding to climate change, specifically under Section 22, Your Excellencies. I would further, yes, Your Excellency. Agent, you, you indicated a moment ago that the, uh, that the bears unexpectedly uh, migrated across the borders. Yet at the same time, you, you're, you're continuously emphasizing the phenomena of climate change, which means that you're arguing that it was both predictable that there would be movement of the species due to climate change, and yet it's unexpected that they moved across the border. How would you reconcile those two positions? Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, Ranikora did not expect the gray bear to cross the border into Arctos, and we will substantiate that with four key points. Point number one, Your Excellency, is that as paragraph 12 states, there was no historic or fossil record of the bear ever migrating into Arctos. And Ranikora thought it was unlikely that the bear would ever go beyond its historic range. Point number two, Your Excellency, is that Ranikora performed due diligence in consulting with scientists and other professionals for a period of five years, as well as conducting an EIA in line with general international law standards. Point number three, Your Excellencies, is that forward movement of the gray bear was taken into account as may be evidenced in paragraph 13 of the record, with the bear being introduced in six different locations in the most viable habitat. Seven minutes. With only the close, thank you with only the closest point being 50 kilometers from the border, Your Excellency. Now, Your Excellency, the average home range of a brown bear 
is up to a maximum of 1055 square kilometers now your excellencies if one were to translate this into an actual radius of movement one would find that this is merely 18 kilometers so which means that a gray bear or a brown bear in this case your excellency would move a maximum of 18 kilometers at most this was also reiterated your excellencies by the IUCN guidelines for population level management plans for large carnivores, which was published in the year 2008, which also found, yes, your excellency. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but my, my question is on this point, which is now that we have this information, now that you are seeing that the, the bear is migrating, perhaps it wasn't foreseeable five years ago, but now we know it is. And there's still, I understand from the record, a plan to do an additional reintroduction next year. So why is that still in the works now that we do have all this new information? Indeed, Your Excellency, we state, Your Excellency, that after this four year period, the only variable that had arisen was changing temperatures and possibly shifting vegetations due to the climate change. Now, in light of this, Your Excellencies, we say that Arctos has now become a rain state thereby casting on them an obligation to protect the gray bear as an endangered migratory species. So if we were to go ahead with the reintroduction, yes, Mr. President. Well, there may be an obligation to protect the, the gray bears that have already migrated, but isn't there an obligation on your part now, following on Judge Lopez's question, not to exacerbate what you now admit is a foreseeable additional threat to them by introducing more bears into that region? Isn't that a, isn't that a fundamental violation of good faith on your part? Thank you, Eric. Since we state that in this case, it the gray bear was simply trying to establish itself in Arctosis territory. Their excellencies will have to remember that this was a migratory endangered species that was simply responding to climate change and thus moving forward. Now, as a shared resource, your excellency, the obligation is on both Arctos and Ranvikora to do all it can to conserve this endangered species. And in light of this, but your excellencies... Agent, I don't think you're answering my question. I, I, I understand the obligation potentially of Arctos to protect the bears that were initially established when it was unforeseeable that they would migrate. But given the fact that we now know that introducing bears in that area will result in migration and damage to the interests of Arctos, is it not bad faith on your part to proceed next year with an additional uh, it, it re, it reintroduction of more bears? and foisting that responsibility on Arctos now to protect them. Yes, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, we state that this is a case of dual obligations. Your Excellency, the obligation of Ran Nakora in this current context is to reintroduce an endangered species. And the responsibility of Arctos is to take care of the species that's expanding due to climate change. Now, Your Excellency, in that regard, we state that Ran Nakora should go ahead and reintroduce continue reintroducing this best so as to bolster their crucially low numbers. And Arctos, as a rain state under the CMS, has a duty to protect them, Your Excellency. We say that the damage that has been caused can sometimes be uh, a cause when animals are seen to be shifting due to climate change and trying to establish themselves in a new ecosystem. Your Excellencies, these could, these it takes a while for a species to establish itself on the food chain. And Your Excellency, that thank you. In that regard, Your Excellencies, we state that in a few years, the bears would unquestionably be a part of Arctos's ecosystem. And in light of what I said earlier, Your Excellencies, Arctos needed an apex predator, as there was no other large carnivore on the continent. And an apex predator's benefits are well known. For example, Your Excellencies, in a study of the reintroduction of bulls in Yellowstone, Colorado in 1995, Your Excellencies, they found that the reintroduction of these bulls led to an increase in the number of lower threat. Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Well, I'm not sure that's relevant here because in that situation, it was a true reintroduction. In other words, wolves were brought back to the exact place where they had been extirpated. Whereas here, there is some factual dispute as to whether or not the reintroduction occurred initially in the historic range. And certainly now that there's been migration, there's no um, evidence that the species had ever been that far north in the past. So I don't know that that's an exact um, application of the, the policy prescription we have here. 
I have a question about the record. Is there any concern or disagreement with respect to this being an alien species by virtue of the fact that it's been extinct since 1963 and long before that, the other, I don't know if there are subspecies or not, in the other countries had been isolated. And so the species that Renvacora brought in are perhaps not even the original same species. Is there any dispute as to those facts in the record or with respect to whether or not this is an alien species? Your Excellency, with regard to your first statement, with regard to the reintroduction of the wolves, Your Excellency, and the dispute on whether the gray bear was reintroduced in its native range, I again reiterate Your Excellency's Section 2 of the IUCN Guidelines 2013, which specifically states for this uh, circumstance, Your Excellency, where, thank you, where evidence is inadequate, Your Excellencies, as in the present case, the existence of a suitable habitat in proximity of the proven range may be considered sufficient. So in this case, Your Excellencies, even if it were to be disputed that this was the native range, we say that the fact that there was uh, a range in close proximity, which is the rest of Ranvikora, Your Excellency, as it migrated within Ranvikora prior to 1963, we say that this was within the native range where the bears were reintroduced. With regard uh, to your second question, second question, Your Excellencies, we state that the grey bear is not an invasive alien species. Now, Your Excellencies, we state that due to these climate range shifts, there is a risk that species might be considered invasive alien. And the international frameworks have gone to great length to make sure that these species are not acted against. I will quickly make reference to the guidelines of 2013, Your Excellencies. Let's see. Fine. Thank you. If I may just uh, conclude with this, Your Excellency. You may. Thank you, Your Excellency. I will, I will then just quickly move on to burn recommendation 142 that states that species that are naturally extending their range due to climate change cannot be considered invasive alien species. And that merely because the species cannot be shown to have historically occurred somewhere, which in this case might be aptos, it does not make it an invasive alien species there. Your Excellencies, I conclude with the maxim in dubio pro natura, when in doubt, favor nature. If Your Excellencies are satisfied with my submissions, I yield the floor to my co agent. It was an honor and a pleasure arguing before this court. Thank you. Thank you, Agent. If I may confirm that I'm audible to all the judges. Thank you. And I specifically request the bailiffs not to announce all the time frames, but only when I run out of time at the end, which is specifically the stop time. You got it. Thank you. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, my name is Shilpa Prasad of Team 2099, and I appear on behalf of the Republic of Ranvikora, the respondent in the present matter. Your Excellencies, I will be furthering the respondent's case by addressing Ranvikora's second submission before the court today, which is regarding the violation of international law by means of Arctos's responses to Ranvikora's Grey Bear reintroduction project. To contextualize my submissions, Your Excellencies, if we may look at the record, we see that after illegally poisoning four grey bears, Arctos unilaterally issued an emergency regulation that expressly authorized all their citizens to shoot the endangered grey bears on site. As a consequence, several bears were indiscriminately shot and killed. Your Excellencies, it is for this court to consider the grave risk Post to this once extinct species and protect them from further harm. To that end, I will submit before this court that Arctos's responses have violated international law by means of violating their obligations under the prohibition on taking an endangered species except within permissible exceptions under the Berne Convention and similar exceptions that are contained. Yes, Your Excellency. 
Yes, on this issue, um, in the explanatory report written by the committee of experts that drafted the text of the Berne Convention in the 1970s, in paragraph 31, it is explained that, quote, it was not thought necessary to specify explicitly that the provisions under A, B, and C of Article 6 would not apply in case of self-defense, unquote. Do you consider this statement to be of any legal relevance in the present dispute? Certainly, Your Excellency, and I have a two-pronged answer to this question. Firstly, the Bern Standing Committee, in interpreting these texts in 1979, had, con had considered that the exceptions need not strictly apply if there is an emergency situation that is prevailing in the state, Your Excellency. However, it is evident from paragraph 16 to the record that the gray bears have been moving into Arctos since September 2017, Your Excellencies, and the indiscriminate measures that were employed were in 2019, almost an entire two years later, Your Excellencies. Given this situation, they had adequate time to explore alternative measures, and there was no subsisting emergency situation that authorized them to invoke the standing committee. Yes, Your Excellency. But, but Agent, uh, you seem to have a part in this also. Uh, when they asked you to take measures to try to prevent the outflow, uh, it, you were non-responsive, and you're now planning to introduce even more bears into that area. Given that fact, uh, wouldn't it be absurd to argue that there would never be an emergency, uh, that you simply continue to have to negotiate while at the same time, Arctis is facing all the damage that, that, that's occurring. Is, isn't that an argument of bad faith on your part? Indeed not, Your Excellency. We believe that we did engage with Ranvikora. If we may specifically allude to paragraph 19 and 23 of the record, we see that we continuously told Ranvikora of the obligations that are imposed on them on account of them now being a rain state, on account of the grave as being endangered. Do I sense a question, Your Excellency? Well, but Agent, essentially what you're saying is you responded by telling them you need to accept this, right? And yes, it seems to put them in a non-tenable position that they can't protect their economic interests or the lives of their citizens because you're unilaterally introducing a species into the area. So. If, if the emergency measure provision is to mean anything, at some point, they have a right to act, and why not now? Certainly, Your Excellency, it is our submission that they do have a right to act. However, their actions must be within the permissible bounds that are contained in Article 9 of the Berne Convention, but more importantly, Article 2 of the Berne Con Convention as well, which is not subject to any exceptions, even under Article 9, wherein a state is required to maintain the population of local fauna and adapt it to ecological, scientific, and cultural requirements, Your Excellency. Given this obligation, Agent, Agent that, that adaptation doesn't preclude them from also taking measures such as eradication in some cases of species that, that threaten them ecologically, correct? Certainly, Your Excellency, while eradication may be resorted to, eradication is the last step that they must resort to, and they must explore alternative solutions before they move to eradication, which is a disproportionate response. Your Excellency, Paragraph one, yes, Your Excellency. Agent, can you suggest with specificity some alternatives that Arctos could have taken that would have been more viable in this case? Certainly, Your Excellency. If we may refer to recommendation 198 of 2018 of the Bern Standing Committee, we see that several alternative measures such as selective feeding, fencing off of predators have been proposed. Are there other alternative measures that have been successfully employed to control and coexist with large carnivores in areas, Your Excellencies? Are adequate lighting of human populated areas to ward off animals using rubber bullets or firecrackers as recommended in section 4.4 in the action plan for conserving the brown bear in Europe by the Council of Europe in 2000, removing animal carcasses? Yes, Your Excellency. So in the context of answering this question, can you do it 
a bit more responsively to the scenario where you're impacting an entire ecosystem by reintroducing a carnivore where there had previously been none. And even more specifically with respect to a question that I had posed to agents for Arctos, which is, can you point us to the doctrine or treaty that's supposed to guide our analysis and weighing the conservation measures that are necessary to protect the bear and the measures that are necessary to protect the tern? What do we look to in weighing that? Certainly, Your Excellency. We believe that in balancing the interests of the globally endangered gray bear versus the locally endangered tern, greater benefits accrue from the conservation of a globally listed species, given that these listings are based on strict criterion that would benefit the world at large, which has limited resources at disposal. Such a, yes, Your Excellency. But Agent, the, the evidence here indicates that this was a biologically discrete uh, uh, subspecies, really. And so where in the record is there evidence that there's global benefits that are derived from this uh, isolated species from a genetic perspective? Your Excellency, we must take into account, as, as stated by my co that the IUCN guidelines on reintroduction specifically state that you may introduce subpopulations into a territory as well, even near to the location where they might not have been found earlier. More importantly, Your Excellency, in specifically addressing your concern, while this is an isolated population, we must take their entire conservation status into account to state that even to state that since they were extinct in Ranvikora, they must be revived in this territory, as specifically stated by the obligations under the Bern Convention, as well as the Convention on Biological Diversity, to revive populations of species. Yes, Your Excellency. We, if we are to assume that this is a, a, a global, uh, globally significant or global population of bears, can you point with specificity to the doctrine or treaty that says that that's more important from a conservation perspective than in a local or an endemic species? Because you seem to be making that comparison that the protection of the bear was more important than the bird because of its range. Certainly, Your Excellency. Uh, it is it is not a submission that they are more important because of the range, but in balancing the interest between the Trauber stern, which is not listed under the Bern Convention, despite other types of sterners being listed under the Bern Convention, versus the globally endangered gray bear, we state that Arctos must take measures to coexist with the gray bear while also protecting their endangered trouber stone, Your Excellency. And this is specifically being stated by the Bond Standing Committee 163 at uh, the Bond Standing Committee Recommendation 163 of 2012 that states that states must employ the coexistence model of the Bond Convention, which underpins the obligations of the Bond Convention to make sure that they can live alongside a large carnivores such as the gray bear, Your Excellency. Therefore, it is our specific submission that the Trauber stern as well as the gray bear can coexist with one another. And in balancing the interests, the court may tilt in favor of conserving the gray bear within the territory of Arctos as well as it is now a rain state. Yes, Your Excellency. But that coexistence uh, model presumes that the, that the uh, species in question is not deemed an invasive species, correct? Certainly, Your Excellency, it does. So your, but argument it, is, your argument's premised on that, right? If if it, if we find it to be a, a invasive species, then the coexistence model is not pertinent in this case, correct? Certainly, Your Excellency. However, certainly not, Your Excellency, because Recommendation 163 of 2012 also states that since large carnivores are also transboundary and migratory in nature, they may not be considered invasive alien species. We may also read this in with the CMS's Scientific Council Resolution 12.21, which also states where, where species are naturally extending their ranges into the territory of an other state, they must not be considered invasive therein, and state parties must take all measures to conserve them and consider themselves rain state for these transboundary animals, Your Excellency. Even if this animal would, yes, Your Excellency. Yes, before you move on, Agent, uh, you mentioned uh, Article 2 of the Berne Convention before. Um, 
and so the, the requirement for each party to the burn convention to ensure that the population level of a, of, of a species of all wild fauna and flora actually meets certain requirements including ecological one without further defining that would you consider that that population kicks in for arctos the moment the first one or two bears um, visit the country Certainly, Your Excellency, we are submitting that since September 2017, the gray bears have been continuously moving into the territory of Arctos, and this must be considered them establishing a migratory pattern in the territory of Arctos. If we may specifically allude to the ecological requirements that are stated in Article 2, this has not been defined in any specific interpretation, Your Excellencies, but if we may refer to the large carnivore guidelines of 2008 at paragraph 2, to look at the population status, only if there is connectivity between the populations must they be considered together. Now, given that the populations in Paddington and Aloysius are independent of the population in Ranvikwara, Arctos must comply with its obligations as a rain state with Ranvikwara to conserve the local population of the grey bears within both the territories, Your Excellencies, to be well above the danger of local extinction, which is the population level that we are submitting before this court, must be maintained under Article 2 as soon as the grey bears start moving, even in small numbers, into the territory of Arctos as specifically alluded to in Resolution 12.21. Your Excellencies, given that Arctos has failed to explore, there are given that Arctos has failed to explore alternative measures, which is one of the two general conditions that must be met under Article 9, and given that the second general condition states that the measures must not be detrimental to the survival of the population, we see that given that the survival of the population has been interpreted in revised resolution to interpreting this article in 2011 at paragraph 9, that in case of a transboundary population such as the migratory gray bear, its entire habitat and subpopulation should be considered when issuing an authorization with special precautions in case of species that are not in favorable conservation status. We must consider that the conservation status of the gray bear is that it is endangered and any culling of any number of the individuals of the species would operate to the significant disadvantage of it. Given that these two general conditions have not been met, Arctos, as the applicant has claimed, that their, ex that their measures fit within the exceptions, they are impermissible to fit their exceptions under Article 9, as these two conjunctive and mandatory general conditions have not been met. Your Excellencies, the applicant has also stated that culling is permitted generally in countries such as Sweden, wherein they have permitted the eradication of over 200 bears. However, Your Excellencies, these eradications comply with the general conditions of Article 9 as they were specific to delimited individuals with the numbers of the bears that were to be culled specified, the authorities involved, and the licenses that were granted, and the circumstances that were specified under which the bears may be killed. Given that this is an unrestricted regulation that provides blanket powers to unlicensed and untrained citizens to cull any number of the individuals of the gray bears, it must be considered to not comply with paragraph 2 of Article 9 as interpreted in 1979 at paragraph 43, as well as the chapeau. Yes, Your Excellency. Just to be clear, and I see you're about to run under, out of time, so please do respond to this. It is, is it your position then if there was a different mechanism for killing the bears, still killing, but with the appropriate trained personnel, uh, would that be permissible? Would that be okay? Or if they had only killed the one bear that killed the child and mauled the other child, would that have been permissible under international law? Your Excellency, we submit that they are allowed to authorize the killing of certain individuals of the bears within permissible bounds, so long as it corresponds to the ecological, scientific, and cultural requirements that they are required to maintain within their territory as stated under Article 2. Therefore, they may be permitted to cull certain individuals within permissible exceptions without, without derogating from the provisions of Article 2 and by maintaining a viable population within their territory. If I may conclude, Your Excellencies, we urge this court to consider the alternative that to permit Arctos to continue its disproportionate response would lead to the endangered gray bear being extinct once again. 
in light of these submissions, we request this honorable court to find their judgment in favor of the respondent and declare that Ranvikura's Grey Bear Reintroduction Project is legal and need not be stopped, whereas Arctos's illegal responses to the same must, be in, must immediately cease and they must permit the reintroduction project to continue. It has been an honor arguing before this court, Your Excellencies. Thank you. Thank you, Agent. Applicant, are you prepared to respond with your rebuttal? Uh, yes, Your Excellency. Please proceed. Just a few points of rebuttal, Your Excellencies. First, the respondents have time and again stressed the importance of large apex predators maintaining an ecological balance. However, Your Excellency, we would submit that apex predators are generally introduced to control the spread of invasive species. And therefore, it should even further be highlighted that when an apex predator itself becomes an invasive species, it is that much more dangerous to the ecosystem of a particular area. Second, Your Excellency, with respect to the fact that the environmental impact assessment was conducted based on historic experience, Recommendation 158 of the Bern Standing Committee is in fact clarified that any such assessment based on historic evidence may not necessarily be adequate in light of the changing climate. Your Excellencies, on the third point, the respondents have time and again stressed the fact that we have not initiated cooperation with respect to the management of bears. However, we would in fact like to submit that there was in fact no cooperation from their end. That irrespective of the fact that we have conveyed the fact that these bears have moved into our state and causing harm and that there was absolutely no cooperation on their part. And this brings me to my point about alternative measures, Your Excellency. That the respondents have given several examples of how what alternative measures could have been used here. However, Your Excellency, we would submit that all those alternative measures are generally used towards individual problem or nuisance bears, such could be seen in the situation between France and Spain in the Pyrenees. But even in those cases, the most effective ways to deal with such alternative measures is when tracking information is shared between two countries. In the absence of such sharing of tracking information in the present case, no such alternative measures could be all could be effectively utilized. Last year, Excellency, we would refer to the fact that Recommendation 163 uh, also that has been quoted by the respondents, in fact, stresses the importance of cooperation. Your Excellency, if I could just wrap up my point. Yes. And since there has been no cooperation, they are in fact violation of the very recommendation they claim. Thank you, Your Excellencies. It has been an honor. Thank you very much to, uh, uh, to both parties. This hearing is now concluded and the court will proceed with its deliberations with the intention of entering a decision. Thank you very much. And uh, we will now uh, turn to our award ceremony. Um, and so uh, after we've after we've concluded, uh, if if the teams, uh, if the two teams could stay around, uh, because then we can take uh, photos with uh, with the uh, with the judges and the teams or at least screenshots of, of uh, you all together. Um, and so uh, so first, I'd like to, to recognize um, uh, all of the teams who were invited to the international finals. Even those who were unable to participate in the in the uh, online rounds, uh, American University, Washington College of Law, the United States, Artsakh State University, Ateneo de Manila University, Philippines, China University of Political Science and Law, the Law and Management Faculty of Bahiana, Brazil, George Washington University Law School. United States, Howard University School of Law, United States, Hugh Wooding Law School, Trinidad and Tobago, Institute of Law, Nurma University, India, Institute of Technology for Higher Studies at Monterey, Mexico, Jindal Global Law School, India, Kathmandu <coughs> School of Law, Nepal, Law Society of Ireland, Moy University, Kenya, National Law Institute University, Bhopal, India, National Taiwan University, National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi, India, 
National University of Singapore, Ramaya College of Law, India, Russian Armenian University, Armenia, Sungshil University, Republic of Korea, uh, University of St. Thomas Aquinas, Colombia, University of Nairobi, Kenya, University of the Philippines College of Law, University of the West Indies at Mona, Jamaica, and the William S. Richardson School of Law, University of Hawaii at Manoa, United States. So we very much appreciate everybody having participated in, in uh, the, the international finals in, in some way. And so I'd like to turn to now to the top five uh, speakers in the preliminary rounds of the international finals. So our fifth placed oralist is Rihanna Mukherjee of uh, National Law Institute University of Bhopal, uh, Team 2000. You just heard from her. And I see, uh, I see we have been, we've been joined by the gray bear itself. Yes, the gray bear. So welcome, welcome. This, you know, this would not be an official Stetson International Environmental Mood Court competition without the appearance of, of the gray bear. Um, so uh, the, the fourth place oralist is Lin Shi Wan of National Taiwan University, team 2083. The third place oralist is Beatrice Anna Balbacal of the University of the Philippines College of Law 2039. The second place oralist is Shilpa Prasad of the National University of, of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi, team 2099. The best oralist in the preliminary rounds is Urania Estralita Emilia Remedios Lindo of the University of the Philippines College of Law. Congratulations. So we'll now turn to the Memorial Awards. And uh, for the Memorial Awards, we're also considering teams who had been invited to the international finals, but were unable to attend, uh, to, who were unable to participate uh, remotely. So the third place Memorial goes to National Taiwan University, Team 2083. The runner-up best memorial, Ateneo de Manila University School of Law, Team 2040. And the mm -hmm. best memorial goes to National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi, India. We would also like to recognize uh, our, our semi-finalists, George Washington University Law School, Team 2009, and the Law Society of Ireland, Team uh, 2032. Now turn to the final round, and the runner-up is National Law Institute, University of Bhopal, Team 2000. And that means the, the international champions of the 24th annual Stetson International Environmental Moot Court Competition is the National University of Advanced Legal Studies, Kochi, India, Team 2099. Congratulations, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And we do have a final award as well. Um, that's the Spirit of Stetson Award, which, we, which traditionally recognizes the team that exemplifies civility, justice, and fair play. And this year, I think it is most appropriate that the Spirit of Stetson Award goes to all the teams who participated in the online international finals. You are amazing. Thank you very much to all of all of the, the teams and your coaches for participating. And I would like to thank uh, a few a few more people. Actually, it's it's, it's, a, it's a long list. A lot of people really helped out here. Um, and I'd like to start with uh, uh, the coordinators of our national and regional rounds. 
Uh, we really could not uh, run this at a global scale without them. We'd like to thank uh, our judges, uh, not only today's excellent panel, uh, but also uh, the judges of the uh, preliminary rounds, as well as those who judged the memorials. Uh, many thanks to our Stetson students who uh, served as, uh, as bailiffs uh, throughout the competition. Uh, we would also like to uh, recognize the support of the Environmental and Land Use Law section of the Florida Bar, and, and of course, thank uh, Dean Alexandre for her support and for her joining us today as well. Um, it is definitely a community-wide effort to, to bring this together. And um, some other folks who, who we should recognize include Dr. Sarah uh, Deo Nareen Singh uh, of the Advocacy Center, Janice Strawn of Faculty Support, uh, our communications and web team, especially Ashley and Barbara, Faculty Support, International Programs, the Advocacy Center, Business Office, uh, uh, a student, uh, Emily Withoff, who hand drew the poster for the program. Uh, and then there's two last people I, I, need, to, I need to recognize. Um, Damon Johnson of uh, Media Services, who is uh, working behind the scenes, making sure uh, that uh, he is dealing with all of our technical issues. And this, I mean, it, hats off, man. This, uh, this really came out uh, very, very well, um, really, really smoothly. Um, and then finally, a huge thanks to my amazing colleague, Erin Okino. Uh, without her outstanding efforts, these, these rounds, these online rounds would not have occurred. Well, well, maybe we would have tried, but it would have been like a, a bear eating a poisoned carcass. And, and we were staggered around for a while until we ultimately collapsed. So uh, thank you, Aaron, uh, for, for everything that you have done, uh, for your tireless dedication, your, uh, your incredible organization, and your unflagging enthusiasm and good cheer. Um, so thank you. And, and um, that concludes our, uh, our, our formal portion of uh, this year's iteration of the Stetson International Environmental Moot Court Competition. Again, thank you to, uh, to all the teams, all the students who, who uh, participated and worked so hard. You're truly, uh, truly inspirational to us. And, um, and so uh, we're, we'll officially close out the program here, but then uh, if the teams would like to remain on the line, we can uh, get some pictures uh, with the judges and, uh, and, and the dean. So, um, so thank you, thank you all. So if we could, let's see, if we could have um, uh, team uh, 2000 uh, join us, please. I'm going to. Uh, hey guys. Webcam, okay. All right. Hey. Ah, excellent. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, great. Let me get a couple of shots here. All right. Smile, everyone. Oh, that's nice. One more screenshot. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You are a pro at this, Roy. I'm impressed. <laughs> Taking <laughs> team pictures online. That is great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, uh, so if you don't mind, if you could stay around so we can get a picture uh, of you with, with the other team as well, please. Sure. Um, yeah, and, definitely. Okay. And so, so, uh, so if you could uh, just go off your webcam uh, now for a moment, uh, and then we'll, okay. we'll ask uh, Team 2009 to, uh, to join us. Okay. Okay. Oh, Dean, you come back, please. I'll come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody looks good. Okay. Nice smile. There's one. We'll do another one. Okay. Good. Okay. Excellent. Thanks. Um, so now, so now let's see, let's try, um, 
if you don't mind, I would love to get a picture with Aaron and me and the two teams. Yes. So if 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 you don't mind, if uh, well, if the judges can uh, can mute your webcams. Yeah, there we go. All right, then we get. Let's see. We need uh, we need another. Boy, why don't I sign off and you and the dean can be the two teams? Okay, all right. The, uh, uh, we don't have any whales. Let's see. Do we? Uh, oh, did I? I meet myself. Okay, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I forgot the Come on. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll uh, let's take a try to take a picture here. This will be difficult because I'm going to be taking a picture of myself. I'm going to try. All right. There's one. We'll do one more. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. And I do. Yes. And if you don't mind, if you don't mind, can we get? Can I do want to get a picture of uh, of you with Aaron as well? Yes. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. So hold on a second. Let me. Uh... Okay. Let's see, Aaron, if you can come back on. Okay. Excellent. All right. Fantastic. Oh, that's a good looking group. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll go with one, <laughs> one, one more, one more. Here we go. All right. Thanks. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much to all of you for organizing this. We can't imagine how hard it must have been logistically. I mean, just thank you. Thanks to all the teams as well. And it was great going up against you guys. We went up against them in the national rounds as well. It's a replay of the finals. So, <laughs> congrats to very, both very teams strong. and all teams. And Aaron and Boy, congratulations. This is amazing. Thank you. Ah, congratulations. Thanks, Dean. Thank all right. Thank you, 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 all, you all take care. Bye -bye. All right. Bye, you everybody. Too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, so if so for those of you who are still with us, uh, we've now concluded uh, our picture taking uh, portion of uh, of our program. Uh, we're we're uh, we're gonna wrap up here and end the uh, the program. and uh, we wish uh, we wish everybody the best. Uh, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you uh, in person in the future. Take care.